what do you think happened before the Big Bang? So this seems, this feels like something that's out of the reach of science. It's out of the reach of present science because science develops and as the front is advance, uh, then new problems come into focus that couldn't even have been postulated before. I mean, if I think of my own career, when I was a student, the evidence for the Big Bang was pretty weak, whereas now it's extremely strong. Um, but we are now thinking about the reason why the universe is the way it is and all that. Um, so uh, I, I would put all these things we've just mentioned in the category of speculative science. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't see a bifurcation between that and philosophy. Um, but of course, to answer your question, um, if we do want to understand the very early universe, then we've got to realize that uh, it may involve even more counterintuitive concepts than quantum theory does, because it's a condition even further away from everyday world than quantum theory is. And remember, our lives, our brains evolved um, and haven't changed much since our ancestors roamed the African savanna and looked yeah. at the everyday world. Um, and uh, it's rather amazing that we've been able to make some sense of the quantum micro world yes. and of the cosmos. But uh, uh, there may be some things which are beyond us. And certainly, as we implied, there are things that we don't yet understand at all. And uh, of course, one concept we might have to jettison is the idea of three dimensions of space and time just ticking away. There are lots of ideas. I mean, uh, I think Stephen Hawking had an idea that talking about what's what happened before the Big Bang, it's like asking what happens if you go north from the North Pole. You know, it, it, it somehow closes off. That's just one idea. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like that idea, but that's a possible one. Um, and uh, uh, and so we just don't know um, what happened at the very beginning of the Big Bang. Were there many Big Bangs rather than one, et cetera? Um, and uh, those are issues which um, we may be able to get some uh, uh, foothold on from some new theory, um, but even then, um, we won't be able to directly test the, th the theories. But I think um, it's a heresy to think you have to be able to test every prediction of a theory. Let me give you another, another example. Um, we take seriously what Einstein's theory says about the inside of black holes, even though we can't observe them, because that theory has been vindicated in many other places, in cosmology and black holes, gravitational waves, and all those things. Um, likewise, if we had a, a theory which um, explains some things about the early history of our Big Bang and the present universe, then we would take seriously the inference if it predicted many Big Bangs, not one, even though we can't predict the other ones. So the example is that we can uh, take seriously a prediction if it's the consequence of a theory that we believe on other grounds. We don't need to be able to uh, detect another Big Bang in order to take it seriously. It may not be a proof, but it's a good indication that uh, this is the direction where the truth lies. Yeah, if the theory is gaining confidence in other ways. Yes. Yes.